I now call this meeting of the Amateur Detective Club to order. My name Tristan Miller, Saucy Sleuth. You know what? My name is Melissa Maley, the spy. Tyler Riley, uh, still uh, Captain ACAB, I think, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I think so. <gasps> Sounds right. Need, Feels right. Do, do we need <laughs> new nicknames? I don't know. Maybe. Uh, uh, who can say? You, I've never. Melissa, have yeah, dug your heels in. You were. When it's right, it's right. Fair. Yeah, it's because it's the Harriet the Spy thing, right? Or what? Yeah, sure. Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Uh, I was like, is it? Or no? Okay. <laughs> no, it, it is. It is. I just don't know Harriet the Spy that well, ironically. So. Oh, gotcha. gotcha. If at all. Okay. But it, it's cute. It sticks. And in if I were a completely different person, well, maybe not a completely different person, but if I were like half of a different person, I would think it would be neat to be a spy. <laughs> <laughs> If I didn't yeah, have I like care. anxiety and, um, yeah. you know, we're, we're actually a stealthy person or just all these qualities that I lack. Fair enough. <laughs> I think, I think I'd work for the CIA if they offered me a job. Yeah. I think I'd do that. I can't speak on any of this. I, okay, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes. Okay. <laughs> no, it's too much to, uh, yeah, can't say more. Yeah, can't say any more. Um, there's something else that I wanted to mention. Is it vis a vis the, the names? This is off to a really compelling start of us trying to remember <laughs> stuff. Would it help if Maybe I talk about least. something completely different while you're thinking? Oh, well, before we do, <laughs> patreon.com slash ADC pod. That was content, yep. early episodes. Yep. That was just what I was going to say, but okay. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> Love it. Well, we all, we all were eager for it. We so were. what do you guys have to say? Uh, Instagram at ADC pod. Oh, crap. I forgot to post the episode from last week. Sorry. So we oh, had an episode crazy. last week and I'm going to post about <laughs> it uh, today um yeah but um by the time you're hearing it, it will be an entire week late the no you know what forget about the time machine i'm gonna post it as we are recording the day saturday and it'll, you'll have already seen it saturday so, the the 17th yeah so this is a blast from the past now you know my oh, thoughts <laughs> yeah it's a mess is what it is in my process <laughs> Yay, yay. It's I kept remembering at the wrong time. Amazing. Mm -hmm. my, most of my life. Okay, Tristan, did you remember your thing? No, but I am joining uh, the call from the luxury of my bed because I'm not feeling well today. Oh. And, um, you know, here's the thing. Number one, my energy, very relaxed, as you may have noticed because <laughs> yes. of it. And number two, uh, might be this might be the new thing for podcasting. It's just doing it out of you because you can really you could podcast anywhere. I don't know if you know this. The, the boys <laughs> from Worst Idea of All Time, they did a podcast in a tree, which is really great. Which is you know they were climbed a tree and then they did a podcast in it, and it was very fun. Uh, greatest generation on uh, our our friends our my our friends at Maximum Fun. I don't know. Are they our friends? <laughs> Uh, but at any I, rate, I think there are enemies at this point. Oh dear! Well, I sure listen to them a lot for no, enemy. Thy enemy. <laughs> it's, it's... But uh, Max Fun, uh, yes, Greatest Generation Star Trek podcast. Uh, they have like a game where they find out where they're gonna, how they're gonna be recording their next episode. Mm. And most of the squares are regular episodes, but sometimes they have to, you know, record. Um, while doing like a specific activity and this particular square is they record from the bathtub <laughs> i'd like to do that <laughs> I mean, that just seems like so uncomfortable it seems Laying like down? An... yeah like on a in a hard tub have you taken baths 
Yes, okay, we didn't mention that it was like a fully run <laughs> bath. Like, and you also have like, you have equipment. How? No, no, thank you. I'd be anxious about that the entire time. Yeah, Either yeah. Way, it doesn't work for me. <laughs> okay, fair. That's fair. That is fair. Uh, yeah, when they set it up, they, uh, it, it was a sonic nightmare. <laughs> Here's the thing. If is Trumbo that robot can... Man? write a script in a bathtub you can make a podcast in a bathtub you can it should you <laughs> that's between you and the lord exactly uh so what are we talking about today bathtubs uh, season and two episode what are we six what is it six six titled yes. performance review yes there performance we view you ever get you ever gotten a bad performance review? Funnily enough, like I mean, like no, but like we're going through reviews at work right now, so maybe. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that seems like something we'll that, that Tyler would would get a bad performance review. Sounds very on brand. Yeah, 100 percent Um, have you ever got a bad review of a performance? We're all actors here. Yes. Oh, really? Someone's yeah. put, like blasted you? Oh, I'm so sorry. I mean, it wasn't like because I wrote like it. I apologize. You know what I mean? But <laughs> mm. yeah, it was not nice. <laughs> oh no! I'm sorry. That sucks. Yeah. Was uh, what was it? The situation? Oh gosh, it was for I think it was for Sh the Sherlock musical. Oh, oh. gosh. Damn. Okay, I didn't see this that. review. Yeah. And you won't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good. Mm -hmm. If there was a bad because I put it out of you know it's not in my history anymore and I'm not searching for it. <laughs> okay. Well, if it was bad for the whole production, I definitely don't want to read it. Um, it, it wasn't bad for the whole production. Oh, really? Yeah. Huh. It was like like performance or like it was it was a me. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Is that better or worse? Oh no! I'm I think sorry. better for the situation. It's certainly it was funnier a good show. <laughs> oh. Well, they were wrong. You were great. Um, I actually... Yeah, I mean, I got more positive notices that, like, the good outweighed the bad. That's why I'm not, like, pressed about it. But, like, yeah, I, it, they said it. Oh, man. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, I wait until people send me good reviews of my performances. So I read those because I don't... My ego is not established enough that I can... Mm. Yeah. That I can endure, endure that um it's why i don't read our reviews um but i have gotten like a couple of speaking of please rate review and subscribe please <laughs> say nice things about me i i need it for just my life in general thank you medical reasons it's medicinal um you're honestly it is uh i have gotten i had a temp job once that like didn't want me back because they said i wasn't doing my work and was like playing with my nails the whole time uh it, yeah it was really perplexing when my temp like agency it. called me and they just were uh, this person just were didn't working, like me were you working at a home depot playing with nails like uh. <laughs> um so it was just like a secretarial kind of thing like answering phones and in the meantime they said look through this newspaper and look for instances of these words but they wanted me to do it super fast and it's like this is not my skill set i am not the person for this job also i don't know enough about the topic you want me to skim through and so i guess they thought that i was just like spacing out and not doing anything and it's like i'm answering phones for you i just got bad vibes from the person that was in charge of me anyway but yeah so at least my temp agency was like yeah it feels like it was them so I appreciated that, but yes, uh, yeah. So yeah. I haven't gotten a bad performance review myself or a review of my performance, but I'll say this: talking about reviews is like when you're you're running your own PR for your comedy show. Yeah, and I've read a lot of dumb shit about me. Oof, that's <laughs> like I've read a yeah. lot. I've just had to like sift through like where are the pull quotes, where is this? 
mostly uh the most negative review i've ever gotten is they're like it's really concise and clear up top and then it gets really muddled at the end of the show and i'm like well that's on purpose so i'm glad you thought so oh okay well there you, you go know. it's like that so, if you don't like that do. well then you just didn't like the structure of my yeah, show that's it's like it's not like because he it, it made it seem like it was uh and this was down in new zealand i think it was art murmurs and he made it seem like it's like well it's not as polished and it's wandering storytelling and if he you know just worked on it more they could get really good and i'm like well no it's chaotic on purpose yeah because it's a show about how chaotic i it's a show about anyway. what happens in your brain yeah yeah exactly so mm -hmm. uh so let's talk about oh Another Speaking yes. Of, um, if you're listening to this in real time on mm. May fourth, um, at Caveat, I'm performing and recording Manic Impressive. If you're in the New York area, come by, see me. I'm gonna put the link in the show notes. Please, I'm trying to sell this thing out for the love of God. Come to the show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Please do. Uh, it's all... really good. What is the caveat there? <laughs> <laughs> um, caveat. Uh, caveat is that you better give me a good review otherwise you know i'll be sad we don't want that don't make so us I'll sad be there. yeah no. i will too <clears throat> It'll be all good okay so we are starting out with cinda canning's office and poppy poppy her assistant uh is okay, okay okay um it's Pop reading poppy sounds like popeye oh okay oh, oh okay. there we go <laughs> that's all <laughs> i like something spinach something something <laughs> i'm trying to get the laughs in here i don't know what to tell you <laughs> i just didn't make the connection um she's okay. she's greeting a guy named jimmy who this handsome fella <laughs> Uh, who is implying that Mabel chopped off his finger. He has... Uh, yeah, and he, his middle finger. Yeah. Yeah. So he can't flip the double bird at anybody. Or hold chopsticks, which he is very upset about. Yeah, yeah. Can, uh, can you guys eat with chopsticks? Yes. I can. Melissa? Well? Uh -huh. Yeah, not well. Okay. Uh, can you eat rice with chopsticks? See, that's the thing. Mm-hmm. As the like food. sushi for mm -hmm. sure yeah. yeah anything that holds itself together if it is many grains of small rice uh no uh not really mm -hmm. so i mean i i can manage but it's not it's not cute um and i always try to be cute when i'm eating what, what happened was there a i don't say? know <laughs> I heard a doop -a -doop, doop doop. I have no idea who's that. Oh was, my but... gosh, it's a new, it phone. new phone. I don't understand the sounds <laughs> that it makes. It's really. It's Tyler got a new phone and he doesn't know how to work it yet. And it's say I don't know what's happening here. Grandpa Tyler over here. Good, we're leaving all of the sounds. Like, are is anyone surprised? No, see now you're sliding into the Charles of it all. Oh. Ah. Uh... We'll get into it. Yeah. We will. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Huck, I forgot his name, is being walked in by Poppy to meet with Candace. What's her name? Cinda Canning. Cinda Canning, just condensed. You did. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Uh, Portmanteau of a name. Ooh. <laughs> Are, okay, are we being facetious about uh, finding Jimmy attractive, or do you think he? Do you find him attractive? Does nobody? Because I did. I can't. I can't. I can't say that he moves the dial for me. Okay, at all. that's uh -uh. fine. Different choice for different folks. Okay, great. I thought at uh, first you were being facetious, and I. Um, okay, very good. Now I understand. Okay, so Melissa thinks he's an uggo. Got it. Cool. <laughs> No, he's we're fine. Just, oh my god! Like coming after this, he's already missing a finger, and yet now you're like he's and he's ugly. So he should, yeah, and that's what oh, for me. Maybe he deserved it for being ugly, is what you're saying. I honestly forget what he looks like, so I do remember <laughs> that he has longer hair, which tends not to do it for me. Um, yeah. So, 
Anyway, yeah, he's uh, he just looks like some uh, Italian American guy. Yeah, because famously, well, I don't go for that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I've dated multiple Italian men. Anyway, I. What's that come on go? <laughs> yeah, he's there to talk about. Uh, he is a former. We wait, wait. Did we already establish this? Am I just repeating things? No, <laughs> no, no. You're you're okay. adding. Yeah, you're adding. Great. All right. So Jimmy is a former coworker of Mabel's from when they worked together at Long John Silver's. Yes, yeah. exactly. Um. We also, in this scene, uh, get another glimpse in or insight into Poppy and not Candace's relationship. Uh, Cindy. Cindy? Uh, Cinda. I'm going to stop talking for a while. <laughs> no, no. Uh, they make... say Tina Fey. <laughs> you could, yeah. Um, not... <laughs> can... <laughs> Not Candace. I think we have also established enough that that will work. Uh, okay. Yes. So, so yeah. Uh, Poppy's doing some voiceover. She's recording a podcast. And is she really recording a podcast? Not. Maybe it's. Uh, she's, she calls it white noise because she's. Her name is Poppy White, I believe. Yeah, um, I thought that was cute. Yeah, that is cute. And so she's making it clear to us the audience that she wants more responsibilities she wants to be a podcaster as opposed to which like i mean you can just do look at us but no she wants i'm in my bed right now like, yes like you can do it anywhere but yeah she she wants <laughs> to be established like cinda is and you know very npr vibes or whatever uh, very serial, actually, I should say, is really the is the vibe there. So uh, we get that insight and then you see her kind of like broken out of her reverie by Cinda uh, texting her and asking her to come in and make an excuse so that uh, Cinda can, can poop. So, so that Cinda can poop. Exactly. Uh, and then we get, I think, the credits Yes, and can I just say a great use of an assistant? Because that's literally <laughs> it, besides yes. like getting random snacks, that would be like their second highest priority. It's just getting me out of rooms. Yeah, that makes sense. It's honestly the least offensive thing that she does in the uh in this episode. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Uh that one makes sense. Um, what I would want an assistant for is so that they can manage my, honestly, I want them to tell me to do stuff mm -hmm. and then basically give me a sticker when I've finished a task. I love like that. Your assistant would be almost like the reverse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I need someone to manage my time and make me feel good about accomplishing anything <laughs> because Ooh, I that's love that. what my life is like. Yeah. I'd be very, very nice to them. <sighs> These are the dreams. So mm -hmm. then we see Alice photographing, like surreptitiously, surreptitiously trying to photograph the blood spot on Mabel's floor. And then she kind of covers. Yeah. yeah. kind of insane thing to do. Yeah, it is. And... Then she kind of covers her bases by trying to like take cute pictures of Mabel when she walks into the room and like just oh I just love documenting blah 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 blah. Um, I mean, sure. What if one might posit, if you were, that she was like, oh that's that's a shade of red that I have been trying to get for these nails for like the past five months. <laughs> Let me take a photo. <laughs> you know. Take it to yeah. the salon. Get the yeah. hookup. Yeah, sure. No, no one wants bl dried blood. No, nothing more popular than dried blood mahroon. I mean, it's a pretty I good mean, note. Look at the way she dresses. I'm just That's saying. True. Fair enough. Wacky gal. Uh, Honestly, no, things. It's not a bad nail like, color. Yeah, like and, okay. like so we do like a splatter pattern. People oh, that, right? that's cute. Yeah, there are people that can do that. They're very talented. Uh, Tristan, two things. Um, one, uh, really great casting because this person is insufferable and they really just 
got someone who can just nail it right on the head there like really this character is just the worst it kind of and it's it it's really well executed is what i'll yeah. say um and then the other thing i was thinking uh, isn't it interesting that alice and elise are basically the same name because hmm. you say alice alice i've just said alice twice Elise I, or Alice, depending on your accent, is that a, okay? Uh, that yes, that could be. That I could see that. Um, certainly in in certain dialects. Um, but I think Tyler and I are thinking of uh folks that we know named Elise. Yeah. So, is <laughs> and it's completely different spelling and all that. So. Oh well, yeah, but it just sounds the same, Elise. Because like if um. <laughs> I don't know if it was a French, but Alice. <laughs> yeah, no, French, exactly. I think yeah. that's right. Um, Which I think is, I do think Alice is just the French spelling of Alice. Interesting. Yeah, look, sure. yeah, look it up at home, kids. But speaking of Alice, Alice uh, was with Melissa and I at my Jennifer Lopez watch mm. party last yes. night. Yes. Uh, this is me. Sad, dot, 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 now. Um, a love story. And mm -hmm. it was uh, we were also reunited with Jeremy uh, Cutler, who uh, was in The Tempest with us, mm. the production where we all first uh, met. And Jeremy like arrived very early, and like I was kind of like trying to catch him up on like Jennifer Lopez and like whatnot. Yes, and it came to pass that like he didn't know Selena. Oh, and furthermore, like. Did not know Selena the human. Oh. And so we were like, wait, what? And we were like, no, like, Selena. So we're like, we're quoting and we're like doing the thing. And he's like, oh, like, I know Selena Gomez. And I was oh, like, oh, oh, sweet. oh, oh, my heart. <laughs> oh, my heart. So, uh, Tristan, by your face, do you know Selena? I was gonna say there's there's also someone on this call that uh thinks that you were referring to Selena Gomez as well. That I have no idea who wild, you're talking about. Wild no idea to who me. You're talking about. Yeah. Oh my gosh, cultural icon. Do yourself Selena. a favor. Yes. Uh this is tangentially relevant. Uh her story, because it is also unfortunately a true crime story. Um, Selena was yeah. a very, very popular, well beloved singer, and she made friends with a fan who no, it was uh a friend who became her fan club president oh okay that was what it was yeah it was a friend and um this woman i don't know it seems like something broke in her brain and um she murdered her yeah she selena confronted her because they found out that she was siphoning money that's what it was that's right yeah, uh, and so shot her to try to. I don't know, like what you think, like in that situation, because like you're just only making things worse. Yeah, no, of course, exactly. I can't imagine looking at a gun and go, "Oh yeah, this will fix it." Right? Like, yeah. Like it. Yeah. No, at least it's... use a sword like a gentleman. Come on. Yeah. Um. Hand to hand and... combat. <laughs> yeah. Bring it um... back. It was absolutely just a terrible, terrible tragedy. And yeah. Jennifer Lopez played her in a film version of the story called mm -hmm. Selena. Which then really launched her career because she then like That's right, it did. became like the first Latina to get paid, like make that type of money. Yeah. Mm. Uh, but, uh, but we are back with Selena Gomez. Yes. Not Selena. Yes. Good <laughs> transition. Very they good. Yes, love breakfast. breakfast. Um, some sort of egg dish, and uh, Selena Gomez is like, my dad said, uh, eggs should never be runny, but they should walk. And I'm like, that's absolutely correct. When you have an egg that's a little runny in the middle, oh my god, I was. Gonna... Yeah, that that is good. And so Alice starts asking more about her dad, and Mabel doesn't really want to talk about it. Um, she says she likes that Alice doesn't really know about her past and. Yeah. Everything feels new. Which is point me, Mabel. Mind your business. Mm. There you go. Yep. There you go. 
Um, so we get another scene. We get cut to Charles flirting with Jan at the prison. Ah, oh, Charles. <laughs> Talk about the greatest love story never told. <laughs> <laughs> These two kids. Uh. Oh, boy. Um, There's some really funny acting from Steve Martin in this scene. I'll, I'll say it. I'll say it. Steve mm. is a pretty funny guy. I know oh. a lot of people are out, out here saying it, but I'll step up. Yeah, I remember that it's article. Pretty funny guy. Wasn't that Martin Short? I'm kidding. I, it, was, uh, yeah. Short. Okay. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure I had it right in my head. Uh, and Charles references the fact that they're broken up, and Jan is like, "Are we? Did we break up?" Uh, why? Because they tried to kill you. And like, for oh, me, fair point. Okay. So if someone tries to kill you, you still do need to have uh, an official, we are no longer together talk. Yeah, because I mean, like, how bad did you try to murder me? Like, yeah. did you try to poison yeah. me? Like, was it a, like was it passionate? Like, was it methodical? Or like, you know what I mean? Methodical okay. or like was it something going awry? I see. Yeah. No. 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 That, that's that's because true. like if they're methodical and I've like been planning it out, we can make it work. I think. Oh. Okay. I. No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> that's better. <laughs> I would say, the only you would definitely need um a, like a letter of clarification if you succeeded in murdering me, because I want one at the funeral to know. Hey, we're not together. <laughs> More. Oh sure, okay, yes. Yeah. Dearly beloved. Gotcha. <laughs> okay, understood. Understood. Um, okay, so Charles doesn't seem completely put off, which is concerning. Um, then we cut to Oliver, who is getting a DNA test because he wants to find out if he has any Greek blood in him. This turns out scene. he's one hundred percent. That, that bitch. Oh, yes. Yes, they do say that. Yes. And, oh, man, that is he for the rest of the episode is stressed out about getting this email. Uh, confirming his ethnicity. So I, I just love that he's so deep in denial that he's like, oh, it couldn't possibly be that my wife slept with someone else. It must be that my entire family is incorrect. Yeah, just, yeah. God, that's so stressful. That is I mean, so I stressful. I like, feel, beach. I do feel very bad for him. Very this. sad. Yeah, it's very sad. I felt even worse for the person sitting next to him. Oh, yeah. Good God. That man yeah, can talk and talk. He he sure can. Yeah. I mean, I guess that's points for me being Oliver because the chances that I would overshare in a waiting room are... <laughs> astronomical unfortunately hi uh, i can't help myself i'm so sorry um yeah uh so oliver charles and mabel and lucy uh are watching the diner video while they're on oh i skipped a whole paragraph of my notes uh I say we're on set i, I know. know yes we are on set oh. sorry um so actually this is where the credits come in uh after the dna test scene uh, we get a scene of the new Brazos, and oh boy, this show is not good. <laughs> what? It's not good. <laughs> Where but are I the Emmys say... for? <laughs> <laughs> I will say this: show points for me not being Charles, but being old Brazos, because he's like trying to solve a murder and then just shouting, "I want soup!" And there's never a moment. <laughs> in my life where a bowl of soup would not be welcome <laughs> fair absolutely fair oh, i French disagree soup, because i you feel like it? you take acting seriously and if you were told that your character wanted soup you'd do it you'd yeah do it. yeah that's true yeah. that is true oh i mean yeah it's what's on the page um so he delivers his final lines and it's a wrap on him and his makeup artist comes up to him and she is All right. a little flirty. And uh, yeah. I was so happy to see Andrea Martin. Yes. I love her so much. 
Yes, kind so of much. It's hysterical. It's, it's very nice. It's very exciting. Um, and then we see Zaz, his stunt double, played by Jane Lynch. <laughs> Brilliantly played by Jane Lynch. I just, I said, you know, and pardon my French here, but I said when she showed up again, I said, oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> And I despise this character. I don't know if you got to that episode, Tyler, but I cannot stand this cat in the hat ass bitch. I just cannot. I think oh, Jane I... Lynch is a great actor, but I cannot stand this character. And like, agreed. Like, for like, the character is insufferable in a different way than uh, Artie McGuire dies. Um, <laughs> But, like, it's just, like, her subtleties. Like, we get into another scene with this character later where, like, I was, like, I could see Steve Martin, like, doing, like, even, like, eye, like eyebrow raises. Like, it just, like, mm, it was mm-hmm. perfect. Yeah, she does a good job. And actually, and I then... I that character, yes. <laughs> yeah, uh, the following scene that she's in. She's in two scenes in this. And the second scene is, I thought, I think, actually great. But we'll get to yeah. it. it I agree. Again, great performance. Can't stand the character. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, it's one of those things because you kind of imagine Charles seeing Zaz and being feeling that way too. (laughs) Just, uh, (laughs) why are you here? (laughs) Um, Doing some stunts with her, his wheelchair too. Yeah. He's in a wheelchair for (sighs) Brazos two point and so she's just like yeah i got it don't worry about it but he's like i can do a wheelchair and she's like nah you can't i got it my sweet baby boy i'm here to do what you physically and emotionally cannot yeah i was like great oh, my god yeah but that's yeah. a great uh setup for something later exactly mm-hmm. uh so then uh oliver charles and mabel and lucy are all there on set and they're watching the diner video. Um, and it looks like there's a far- uh, a partial fingerprint. Uh, and far- Guy Fieri shows up and he's like, ah, crazy, these fries. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Diners, diners, and fries, you know. Yeah, oh, okay, yeah. You know, you don't remember, do you not remember Guy Fieri? Oh, of course I remember Guy Fieri. Oh, I have been past a flavor town okay Ooh. all right there is a uh a guy fieri restaurant at disney springs called chicken guy so now he's... here's the thing about that a choice <laughs> <laughs> chicken guy yeah that rules <laughs> uh, it has that name yeah rules. As you might Maybe imagine, do, like fiery chicken, like so it's like fiery chicken, like spice, like <laughs> that's where I would have gone personally. <laughs> but chicken guy is what we went with instead. Okay. Yeah. Cool, cool, so cool. Uh, I haven't actually had anything from there, but it's it's like chicken tenders and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> chicken guy. Chicken guy. You imagine a like a homunculi. You know, you imagine it's like some <laughs> sort of oh. owl golem. Oh, uh, there is, I believe that the image for the restaurant, like the mascot for the restaurant is basically Guy Fieri as a chicken. <laughs> but he's not a man. He's a chicken boo. <laughs> like 12 people will get that reference. That's also what I was thinking. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> there you have it. I agree. There you um, have it. So they say, okay, we have evidence now. We have a partial fingerprint, and Charles wants to text text Detective Williams. Detective Williams, our friend from season one, who was in the first episode of this season, who, um, if you'll remember, we got from the last or previously on package, uh, Charles saying, oh, so you were the one who texted us to get down from the roof or something like that. And she said... I don't know what you're talking about. I did not text you. So he's wait. He winked at her. So he really thinks that it was her texting him. And so he wants to use that phone number to 
tell her about the evidence. So and also for context, mm, we like meaning us as the host of this podcast. Yes. Have a better chance of becoming friends with Detective Williams than our famed trio. <laughs> <laughs> she does not like these people no uh, do you blame her? i don't but like it's cr- like how he is so insistent that she's having like these back and forths with him via text message is insane and it's hysterical yeah it is very funny so they're standing around charles's kitchen later and the they text this number and Detective Williams, in quotes, is what I wrote, uh, wants to meet them and says not to tell anybody, which because, you know, she can't have the rest of the police force finding out about this meeting. She's the only one they can trust. I did like that. um, I did like the writing in this bit because like the text message was like very Detective Williams response, like was... um, Mm -hmm. It's because I'm the only one who knows y- y'all are too stupid to have pulled something like this off. So yes. it's like even more of an indicator that it could have been. Right. No, for those, sure. Uh, smartly. Um, yes. I actually jumped the gun. We're not quite in the kitchen yet. Uh, we're still on set. And uh, a police officer comes in and says that Michael Rappaport cop wants to meet them at Bunny's. Right. And oh, yeah. also on and set all- is... Uh, um, is a uh, little girl. What's Lucy. her name? Yes, right. You mentioned her, and I was like, who's that? I'm going to forget about it. <laughs> sure, yes. Tyler, yes. Uh, oh my gosh, Mabel. <laughs> Mabel also showed, um, or they discovered the matchbook, and they're showing it mm. off, and she flips it over, and there's like, oh, there's a bloody thumbprint on this matchbook. Yes. So they're still on set. A real police officer comes in. Lucy is on her way out and says, are you a real cop or an actor? Says, real cop. She says, oh, you look like an actor. And then leaves. So that's <laughs> that's a moment that happened. Oh, I want to bring up something as well. There's a moment where the uh, hair and makeup lady is flirting with Charles and everyone's clearly on board for it, except for Charles, who, you know, obviously is hesitant because he's not not broken up with Jan. But there's a lot of interplay between all three of the other characters kind of giving Charles a hard time. And it was some really great chemistry from the cast in that scene. I yeah. Say. Oh, really yeah. Lovely, very funny um oliver and lucy get along really well and it bothers charles so i'm like that's very funny and good um yeah absolutely yeah. Mm-hmm. uh so michael rapaport cop wants them all to meet at bunnies they go and cinda and poppy are inexplicably also there yeah um but then we find out that the reason he's called this meeting I don't know why it has to be in Bunny's apartment, but he's called this meeting right. because he wants all of them to stop podcasting. Which, you know, relatable. If I could <laughs> scream at everyone, <laughs> including myself, to do it. I, I recorded that clip on my phone. I will post it later. It's deeply relatable. Okay. <laughs> it's the only time anything Michael Rappaport has said anything I agree with. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Oh my god, that man. Yeah, there you go. Uh, character anyway. and human. Yeah, for real. Um yeah. so they keep getting tips because of the podcasts. So the police precinct is just overrun with too many tips. And um I have something to say about one of the things he says he talks about Mrs. Gambolini and says, There's this everyone keeps talking about a bird and it's called the parrot theory. And that is a nod to another true crime. Mm. That, so it's Mel- story time with Melissa, where I will, from my memory, badly explain what happened in a true crime. I'm here for it. Excellent. Uh, actually, this one I I'm think I'm, think I'm going to get right. Mm, famous last words. But um, <laughs> this married couple, uh, this guy was a writer. And... Already a bad sign. Mm, his... <laughs> 
one night they're like hanging out, having some drinks, watching a movie or whatever. Um, and his wife, he comes back in. His wife has already gone inside. He comes back in and finds his wife, allegedly, what he says, uh, dead at the bottom of the stairs, having fallen down the stairs. Um, and he is eventually suspected in her murder um, and actually is convicted of it. But then later gets the conviction overturned because of um, because the evidence leading to his conviction was uh, questionable and some theories uh, or some testimony was questionable in the actual um, trial, not to get too much into it. There's a very, very popular uh, documentary series about it on Netflix called The Staircase. And... One of the things that they bring up in the very last episode of this, uh, which is documented elsewhere as well, is that one, a couple of people, uh, I think led by one guy, theorized that if, and because she had like um, marks in the back of her head and they thought that she had been beaten with a fireplace poker. But this guy says that those marks could have been caused by the talons of an owl. So if she had been attacked by an owl, which are indigenous to the uh, area that they were in, she could have been attacked by an owl at the back of her head, then have it gone up the stairs uh, while bleeding, and then eventually, you know, fallen down the stairs and continued to suffer from her injuries and pass away. Uh, so that is called the owl theory. So when they say the parrot theory in in this episode, it, it made me go, ah, uh-huh. I'll have to parrot? look into that. Yeah. I will find names. Who do you think did it? <laughs> I actually, I have a really hard time with this one because they cast, there's so much doubt cast on it, but because at first I was like, this guy did it. This man killed his wife. There's no other way. Uh, he also had another person in his life turn up at the bottom of a set of stairs dead, which seems very suspicious. Um, I know you said set of stairs, but it sounded like Fred Astaire's. Good. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, what? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Ginger Rogers could murder anyone that Fred could, but backwards. Yes, exactly. Uh, no, <laughs> I this man's name I think is Michael Peterson. Um, I have a trouble remembering his name because it sounds just like a generic white man. But yeah, yeah, Michael Peterson. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's right. But uh, I think like I 60 percent think he did it. But they're correct that there is not quite enough evidence for a conviction anyway so that's that story owls are bad omens man there you go um carpenters are jeff yes so after michael rapaport leaves cinda tells the trio oh uh, yeah about the jimmy russo interview and uh she says a bunch of things she's very dismissive of poppy and mabel of course is very horrified that Jimmy Russo is giving has given this interview and doesn't want the episode to air. And mm -hmm. so she stops Poppy in the hallway and just like, hey, are you OK? You know, she was very mean to you and you should stand up for yourself more. Also, if you want to really set yourself apart, you should tell Cinda not to air this interview because Jimmy's full of shit. Um. And Poppy says, Cinda does respect me. And then Cinda whistles for her like a dog. Says, here, girl. Yeah. But it was an inside joke, quote unquote. Yeah, that's what Poppy excuses it as. So. Uh, two things. Tyler yes. Russo doesn't sound that bad. Okay. Uh, and second. <laughs> like, the, I, it was very clear that... It was more than just Jimmy's full of shit for her not wanting the episode to come out. But like at the same time, like it was layered with like a real sincerity and like 
you like how you're being treated is not okay yes yeah no it it was a really solid performance from her in that scene absolutely and i i think that it, because it could be mabel just trying to get in her good graces but it does seem very sincere that she's concerned about poppy as well as not wanting the interview to air so mm -hmm. is this where um she said she poppy talks about cinda throwing a stapler at her she's a reference to amy klobuchar i don't know no, if you no, remember i think that, that... Oh, gosh hmm. yes that's right uh i don't remember <laughs> where she soda. I don't remember where she says that, but yeah, she does talk about the stapler oh, being thrown at her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Uh, so then they're back up in the in Charles' apartment. I don't know why I assume it's upstairs from Bunny's apartment. I have no idea, but it feels that way to me. I just said up. Uh, but they're up in Charles' apartment, and they are kind of getting suspicious because... Uh, Michael Rappaport, before he left, did say that Detective Williams was in Denver, Denver. on maternity leave. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, it seems unlikely that this person is who's texting with them is Detective Williams, and they're actually starting to realize that. Um, so the mystery texter says that they can't, they can't meet now, but... The trio should so leave. Likely comes up. Mystery texter comes up. Can you imagine? <laughs> yeah, I like that. I like that. Um, Sorry. Oh, that's okay. <sighs> and mystery texter says they can't meet now, but that they should leave evidence at Morningside Park, and that this person will come and pick it up, which is super sus. And they figure that oh no we are actually texting with the killer yeah and um martin short throws the phone away once he realizes it and then steve yeah. goes that was my phone and then he walks out of frame to go get it and i'm like that's some classic steve and martin malarkey it like, is that's... and yeah. also uh, martin does the thing you know that thing where he yells like a crazy person and it's yeah. funny oh yeah does that very well in yeah that moment yeah, it's very good. Uh, incidentally, there is a framed piece of art, if you want to call it that, on their wall yeah. um, that says nice hot vegetables. Yes, it does. I like and it a lot. I hate it. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. I did not Tyler. notice it. <laughs> <laughs> you got the three opinions. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Goldilocks situation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why um, do you hate it, Melissa? I, oh, I don't know. Just hot. I liked, I like cooked vegetables to be clear, but for some reason, the phrase hot vegetables just makes me uncomfortable. It sounds gross. Was it for a, like, was it a band name maybe? Or was it, was it very much a food orient? I don't know what this looks like. It is just text on, on okay. like a color gradient. Oh, okay. And there's a comma, nice comma, hot vegetables. It does seem like something you could make in Canva. It does. So it feels very yes, Charles. I know what I'm y'all for Christmas this year. <laughs> <laughs> if you did that, I would hang it on my wall. <laughs> I'm gonna look up. I'm gonna do a quick Google here. Okay, see if great. It's a famous. Yeah. Oh, um, I got an alert from our Twitter account that Selena Gomez has revealed that her upcoming single will sound like something. Oh. Oh, anyway. I hope it will. Yeah. Oh, or did it Selena just get cut Gomez, off the message? It just got uh, cut off. Gotcha. Um, I'm okay. calling a bunch of Selena Gomez stan accounts in okay. the hopes that they'll follow us back. Sure. That makes sense. Nice. Uh, like my favorite song from Chuck the Musical, Somebody Will. Yeah. Ah, oh, that's such a fun musical. It really is. Yeah. Did they already close? Yeah, but they're on tour and there's going to be a good. movie. Oh, good. I'm glad there's going to be a movie. That's there's awesome. There's already a recording of the. This uh, so, cast recording. Nice Hot Vegetables is by Ed Rushka. It's a an art piece, a print. Is that what that is? Yeah, it's a print from Ed Rushka done in 1976. Oh. oh. 
Huh. Okay. Yeah, so I, what I and this was my assumption. I assume Steve <laughs> owns it and was like, let me put it on. Okay. Yeah, that Maybe does. Maybe all have a nice hot that. podcast instead. See, that doesn't sound gross. Did, doesn't it? I meant it to be. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, it. Honestly, it sounds worse to me. Uh, vegetables are of God. Podcasts are of man. They're of pain. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're really, I love. They're not natural. I love this energy. Veggie. This energy we're bringing today is good. <laughs> Uh, so Charles devises always from a bed. Yeah, it's a different vibe. Be relaxed when we're recording. Yeah, Charles devises a Brazos plan mm. based oh. on an episode. Yes. Yeah, it's true. He does. Uh, it's cool yeah. the way they shoot that sequence because he, you see him see the Brazos poster that he has hanging in his apartment, and he's mulling it and like working out the problem and he kind of stands in front of the poster and then he turns around so you can see brazos over his shoulder it's uh really nicely shot actually um and so the plan is that they drop fake evidence in a trash can with a paint bomb so that they can rush in and make a citizen's arrest um and Oliver offers that, like, we don't have a paint bomb, but what we can do is we can do a glitter bomb. And then blames regional theater. Not nice. Not nice. Um, but it does make sense that the theater person was would suggest glitter. It's not. <laughs> that is true. It's not wrong. So when, uh, when I first started doing theater, one of the rehearsal rooms had Tyler t- tiles the carpet tiles and there was one that just had a bunch of glitter under it (laughs) and so because kids will you know young kids who are taking the classes would fidget with the the tiles and so it would would much like they do later on go and they'd be like you gotta sit still man (laughs) um also they they say they're gonna make a citizen's arrest which is still a thing you can do But I've been thinking about that a lot because the premise is if you can convince someone to come with you to the police station, (laughs) you could, which is like a crazy thing to do. And the fact that we're all, you know, empowered to do it. I mean, I feel like people either should or should not be doing it more. You know what I mean? We either need to all start doing it more or none of it. We need to get rid of it. Would you go with me? If I arrested you. The police ball? (laughs) Um, yeah, I would. And then I'd go, I'm arresting this citizen for, uh, for being uh, black. Know. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In February, no less, um, for, uh, for falsely accusing me yeah. false arrest. Fair. Right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> false imprisonment, false arrest. Yeah. No, yeah. You came with me. So I would say I would arrest you again, for but the, I'm arresting life. you. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, if I'm arresting you and you're arresting me, who's flying the plane? <laughs> Literally, no one is flying the plane. <laughs> oh my this god. What... <laughs> I yeah, uh, okay. So Yep. We go so, to the park. They do this insane plan. Uh they get a glitter bomb. They or does Charles make it? I don't even know. Uh I uh, think he... Oliver, Oliver, makes Oliver it. does. Oliver, Oliver, yes. Or purchase it, or I don't know. He, made it. he makes it. He does he make it. it. We get into. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. The he the, the Anatoly Christ cookbook PDF saved somewhere on a laptop. <laughs> God, <laughs> apparently. Um, so I love how this scene was shot. With oh, yeah, really. them at the park. Well, yeah, them in the car, and you see, yeah. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Uh, we do get one little scene before we see them uh, in the car. Cinda is recording a podcast, and Poppy makes an appointment mm. that appears in Cinda's calendar as they, I think they just finished recording the podcast. Mm. And um, so Cinda's like, oh, what's this alert for performance review? Um, name of the episode. 
Uh, so Poppy suggests, you know, I just thought maybe we would talk about how things are going with me and if I could maybe get a promotion. And Cinda agrees to the meeting and to have a think on the promotion. Uh, they're also in front of uh, another Louise. co-worker, Luis. Yeah. So meanwhile, the trio is waiting for the killer and they're in the car. And Oliver is talking about when he's talking about his son. Um, and he saw a production of Waiting for Lefty and how supportive he was and how he didn't understand the politics of of it, but he would just cheer loudly. And he's clearly very stressed about finding out maybe Will isn't his son. Um, and then... Unfortunately, uh, only murderers in the building drops mm -hmm. the episode as they're sitting in the car and Mabel turns it on and they hear the Jimmy Russo interview. And he's saying that, you know, she just snapped and chopped off his finger and that she's and so put it in the deep prior and yeah, and served it up. Um, Mabel clarifies to Charles and Oliver that that is not what happened, that this guy was getting handsy with her and she finally pushed him away and he did happen to get his hand caught in a meat slicer. So this guy's gross and I've heard of finger allegedly ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> allegedly. <laughs> what was that, Tristan? I said, I've heard of finger food, but this is ridiculous. Oh, oh there we go. Mm -hmm. yes mm -hmm. uh by the way i did look up this man who plays jimmy russo um and i i see it tyler i get it point me yay <laughs> uh, yeah but him with short hair for you i'm assuming i, I don't i see a picture of him with short hair oh. and still no okay. it's just not for me but i also get it so i see gotcha. what you're saying i see what you see yeah, it was the aesthetic and the accent. I don't know if that is how the man actually speaks, but <laughs> uh, his name is Johnny Hopkins. So Johnny Hopkins, yeah, oh, could be Johnny Hopkins. Yeah, he was in Kick Ass. That that's got to be a stage name, probably. Uh, it's Johns Hopkins. He was in Unforgettable, huh. uh, which I don't know. And yeah, he was in Kick Ass, Sidewalk Traffic. So, oh, Godfather of Harlem. Oh, Detective doing... Park. Okay. Oh, wait, that's not the detective I'm thinking of, anyhow. Hmm. But anyway, the more you know with, about John Hopkins, there this you is go. the John Hopkins podcast now. There you go. <laughs> so then, as they're sitting in the car talking about Jimmy Russo, Charles, then everyone has a moment in this. Oliver talks about Will. Mabel talks about this awful experience with Jimmy. And then Charles reveals that he's been talking to Jan. And Mabel gets real mad because Jan did kill her friend, Tim Kono. He gives a whole big speech about the inner workings of his brain and how difficult it is for him to break up with people or disappoint people etc cetera, etc cetera, and how he just does not know how to break up with jan and we see the guy fully masked up walk over to the trash can and get glitter exploded all over him and run away i would and like it's a, to it's a big suspect. explosion the suspect. women have been murderers before you're right you're right <laughs> yeah. of course you're right i do get big male energy from no, that's this no. Figure. Like it's very whoever the figure was at that point seemed very much, yeah, a, an absolute unit. Yes, Mabel gets extremely frustrated. She's still mad at Charles about the Jan thing. They missed the suspect, and she walks away, walks along the park, um, leaving Charles and Oliver alone. Oliver does say to Charles, like, you know, you gotta break up with Jan, right? He, he's, 
also says this very funny thing when she's like, I just need some space. She goes, don't worry. This happens like once every four episodes. It's whatever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which is that. true. This is, it's very good. Yeah. My thing is like, do, do they care? Because that was a half-ass run if I have ever seen one. Like they did not try to chase that person. Oh, yeah. I mean. Yeah, man. Well, I think they just don't want two old farts and you got a young woman and they probably all can't run too good. Not all of them, but if like you have this opportunity, it just seemed like that bit could have used more energy. Sure. I agree. Yes. Um, So we cut back to Cinda and Poppy and it seems like Cinda is just business as usual and Poppy says, hey, you know, what do you think? What about this promotion? Now they're alone at this point. And uh, Cinda says, oh, yeah, you want to talk about how you were super embarrassing in front of Luis? Um, I'm never going to promote you, Poppy. I just had to get out of that awkward moment. You are such a good assistant. You are a rock star assistant. And I'll give you this advice that I was once given don't be too good at a job you don't want. Which is honestly great advice. It is, yeah. 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 The only nice thing can send the uh, uh, Tina Fey yep. uh, as character does. <laughs> mm-hmm. I would, Yeah, I would even say it's not nice. It's kind, but it's not nice. It's still... Oh, yes, correct. Right. But yeah, I, I 100% agree, Tyler. It's the only like decent thing this person has done yes. ever. Um, um, there's a really funny moment when they're recording the podcast earlier with Tina Fey as well, where they're like, um, what is it? Women's brand soup or something. Oh, I didn't that's, get that. Oh, they're hawking. It I made me laugh. You're right. I just, can't, I yeah. Like, yeah, that's very it was, funny. <laughs> it was, it was like pink, pink apron, not pink apron. A little bit. It was like something like that pink soup. Yeah. <laughs> it did get me. Yeah. That is funny. I didn't clock that. Um, so Mabel decides that she's going to go over and see Alice. Makes sense. I can see that. At least. But <laughs> when she walks into the space, she sees a weird reenactment of the roof scene the night when her friend, the the girl, died. Uh, and yeah. it's like her apartment is fully recreated and... She walks over um, through the kitchen into this other room and she sees Alice kneeling there with a wig, a full outfit on like she's supposed to be Mabel on the night that Bunny died. Blood all over her chest and she has someone playing Bunny and she's trying to coach this person, you know, say savage like it's whatever way she says. And it is creepy and super weird so alice tries to reason with mabel once she's when she sees her but mabel runs out because uh i would too yeah that's not a a good situation but oliver still hasn't gotten the dna results uh he's absolutely freaking out and he barges in on charles in his apartment um meanwhile mabel gets on the subway platform and gets a phone call from poppy as she's walking down the subway stairs and she's getting really good service and i'm very impressed right (laughs) yeah well well yeah it's on the jace it's on the jace uh, line it's an outdoor station oh it's that okay i didn't realize it was the outdoor station i think it might be broadway junction because it's one of those ones that's it's outside, but it's still like mm-hmm. downstairs and it kind of still kind of looks like a tunnel, but you can't really see. It's hard to tell that it's outside. Um, also, I've been on the tube on the train lately. People have been making full ass phone calls from station to station. It's crazy what we're able to do these days. Oh, wow. OK, well, uh, I get yourself T-Mobile, baby. <laughs> But that's what I, I have don't now. Get but it keeps making so much noise. The um, noise, noise, noise. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely T-Mobile. 
Um, but Poppy has some damning info about Cinda that she is all too happy to share with Mabel uh, if she needs her. So they've formed a, a bit of an alliance there. But as she's talking, as Poppy is uh, continuing to talk, Mabel on the subway sees hulking over her the glitter bomb person and she's horrified glitter bomb person is walking over to her and then we cut to oliver and charles on the couch in charles apartment uh will has texted oliver and it is a video of mabel stabbing mm -hmm. the glitter bomb person with a uh knitting needle is that right or what is oh what i thought it was a, like it's a knife yeah i thought it was like the knife <clears throat> yeah like the one oh, that got that lodged in the, the ceiling knife. oh i we might get more mm -hmm. info about the weapon in the next episode but i oh. can't imagine why mabel has a knife on her <laughs> it's new york girl <laughs> oh should i be carrying a knife everywhere everybody um, should just no do not do not do. <laughs> Um, so uh, Oliver asks for a hug from Charles and it's super awkward and they're, they're just, uh, doing the least hugging, uh, and they are having this super awkward hug, uh, making the most out of it. And that's the end of the episode. But there's also the scene where, um, is as he goes oh. and breaks up with oh uh, my gosh for oliver i just completely skipped over that that did happen yes let's get into it yeah <gasps> He's a great check offs stunt person yes so we have this other scene in the midst of the um of the glitter bomb moment it came after before the uh alice apartment it did yeah. situation that's right yeah um and so <laughs> i forget like it, it felt like there i don't remember exactly but it felt like there was like a reveal to like zazzy and like um jen is like just so annoyed <laughs> and so let down like, yeah like, oh, like of all people why are you here don't nobody like you exactly and so Zaz is reading off a script that Charles made for her to break up with Jan. Yeah. And Jan has to tell funny. Zaz to use the phone, you idiot. Yeah. <laughs> Which is very funny. I can't hear you. <laughs> yeah. But then she she gets on it and she she delivers this uh this script and a little she talks about I will it, always it's yes. Erotic. It gets yeah. It gets erotic, exactly. Talking about the bassoon curves and all that, all that stuff. And I'm sure. I almost had to put myself a glass of wine. <laughs> Zaz, uh, Zaz says, to help oh, you I forget." <laughs> <laughs> this gets okay, very. You never thought about a bassoon in such a way. That... <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm more of a French horn person myself. There you go. <laughs> Do with that you with blow that hard you. Oh, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boy, boy, boy. <laughs> so yes, we get a um Zaz says it stops herself and says, Is this doing anything for you? This gets really really steamy. And and Jan says, Oh yeah. And Zaz says, Well, okay, then I will keep going. But we don't get to see the rest of it. So that is that scene. No. Okay, yeah. then I will keep going. Title of my sex tape. <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> i mean yeah that works <laughs> <laughs> oh but yeah so it looks like uh, mabel s stabbed somebody on the subway and that's the end of the episode yeah Yeesh, yeah it's uh I actually um, got too excited and watched the next episode because oh. I couldn't leave oh, it there. So, well, then I won't ask if you think she did it because you'll know. Okay. 
I won't say. I won't say. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Oh, that she did it? No, I don't think that's true. Um, I I enjoyed the episode well enough. I think it was like, uh, it's not not as funny as it could be. Okay. Um, but it's pretty good. I liked it. It was interesting. All the characters are good. Um, this like the this whole I I do like the element that being presented of like number one classism and number two like um how complicit everyone is with consuming true crime content okay because it's like yeah you're making money off of these people and their hardship and that sort of thing and like that's a difficult thing to to parse okay um yeah thought it was pretty good what is it out of five you know three and a half out of five okay enjoyable tyler I'm excited to see what happens with uh, Oliver's storyline. Mm. Yes. I've got a five. This is the episode that I've been waiting for in this series. I was okay. like, this is it for me. Like, we are finally right. firing on cylinders for, like, what I'm into. Yes. So I was I was very on board. And we got to see somebody get stabbed. There it's you true. go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is uh, a four for me. I thought it was really good. I thought it was very an exciting way to move the plot, uh, not just to move the plot along, but like it really moved. Uh, it really moved. It did a lot. I thought a lot of it was um, interesting, justified, love seeing things start to come together. And um, I thought it was really fun. And uh, yeah, that's that's how I feel about it. Fair. So next week, we're going to get to see the next episode that I've already watched. And oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, right. boy. I am now, like, I am really excited to see this next episode. Great. In yeah. In a way that, like, I haven't felt with this, uh, with the series before. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Should be good. Should be interesting. Because, yeah, I, I was just, what, what happened? What? how did this occur so so yeah we get to find out more all I'm right tell, I'm tell. so i think maybe at this point i'll call this uh meeting of the amateur detective club to a uh, close uh gavel sound great i'm gonna go to bed i'm gonna chew hot shoe love it <laughs>